Hello, guys and gals, me, Mudahar, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, nothing is safe. Linux isn't safe. Windows isn't safe. Mac isn't safe. And the reason I'm making this video is because I am looking at around a 12-year-old exploit that has actually been discovered. So this guy called Rich Merch, uh, researcher extraordinaire here, actually found a 12-year exploit that remained unnoticed, despite it being present in the code all along. Now, one of the things that I always hate is when people get this false sense of security, like, oh man, I use Linux, I should be safe. I use Mac, I should be safe. You know, they watch those old ads. I'm a Mac, I'm a PC, and it's always the PC that gets all the venereal diseases by connecting to the internet, which can be true. Windows is generally targeted because most people use it. But uh, there's also people that target Mac systems. We've looked at Mac viruses on this channel. But today we're going to be looking at something Linux related that uh, whew, can be quite dangerous if you don't update your stuff. So the TLDR, if you want to be completely safe and you're on Linux, just update your system. Okay, all the updates are floating out there. But let's say that you haven't updated. How would some guy who gets access to your computer just decide to get complete and total access by going all the way from the local user to the super user? Now, to give you an idea of what the super user is, inside Linux, okay, there is a command known as sudo. It, it's not so much a command as it is an actual uh, program. So, for instance, let's say that you open up that scary, spooky terminal shell, and uh, let's say that you ask, you know, wh what sudo. So, sudo is just a program, user bin sudo. And of course, over here, it's been marked for the process IDs of one. It's been marked for root. Now, this is a program that has been marked for having that root access. Just the mere act of running sudo and reading these usage prompts, it will basically be running at that super user level. So it's kind of like when you get a program on Windows and you right click and hit run as administrator, you should only ever do that for a program you trust. If you just give everything arbitrary, like complete super privileges on your computer, you could land in some pretty nasty water, okay? At least security wise. So of course, how does this actual attack work? It's actually quite interesting. Uh, as much as it is really scary. So the guys over at Red Hat, you know, they were saying that the flaw was found in sudo. This allows a local attacker to escalate their privileges by tricking sudo. So this is more of a logic bug than it is like something like a memory or something, right? So basically we load an arbitrary shared library using the user specified root directory via a ch root option. An attacker can run arbitrary commands as root on systems that support Etsy, nsswitch.conf. Now, how do we convert this nerd speak? Let me walk you through it, okay? That Etsy nsswitch.conf, yeah, most of your Linux systems definitely support it. It's a very crucial part of many Linux systems. That ch root that they're talking about, if you ever followed my Arch Linux installation videos, that should be a command that you know of. So to give you an idea of what ch root is, ch change root, that's how it's, you know, that, that's how it's named. The general idea is, you know, you basically create like a sandbox or a jailed environment that you can root into. Now, when you saw my Arch Linux installation videos, a lot of that stuff was, you know, uh, partitioning your system, putting up a very basic installation of Linux, just enough for you to ch root into it and basically, you know, switch those root uh, accounts. And you could modify that version of Linux that you were building and then eventually boot into it as it was a native install, right? Now the context here is this is arch-ch root, which is more of a wrapper that is specific for arch when setting up environments, correctly of course. But regular ch root, which again is, you know, inside Linux is more for general like recovery, sandboxing, things of that nature. So again, it's not entirely the same context, but again, the, what you really have to know is ch root is initially meant for more like sandboxing, things like recovery, other, you know, natures. So what's basically being leveraged over here is a pretty interesting attack. And thankfully, you know, uh, the individuals behind here, Stratascale made a really good Docker container that allows me to show you how this stuff kind of works. Now underneath Linux, that NS switch that they were talking about is a pretty integral part. So we call it the name service switch. And I guess the best idea, the best way to put it is like when you're looking for information regarding passwords, users, groups, protocols, and so forth, what it does is it provides Linux a way to, you know, it tells Linux, it tells like the system where to look for that kind of information. So whether that be in your file system, 
whether that be with the system D, uh, you know, protocols, whether that be with anything, it gives you a place to look for information. Now, the thing about this is obviously the best close non-tech analog that I can provide is, I guess it's kind of like a contact book in a way too, right? Like, you know how you have people named as like mom or, you know, specific names and those names have like actual nine digit cell phone numbers or however many digits, wherever you live attached to it. So generally speaking, you probably don't open up your phone app and enter the numbers one by one. You probably go to your contact book, tap a name, and as soon as you tap the name, that human readable input, it then goes to the machine readable actual cell number and just dials for you. I guess that's the closest analog that I can put it. That's about the closest way to provide. But on the deep nitty gritty technical side, for Linux, the name service switch is exactly when it comes to querying information, it just tells it where to look for. Now inside the CVE, the, the actual proof of concept they made, they provided this like code and just show you what's kind of going on over here. They make their own shared library, uh, you know, relating to that actual NS switch. Now what they're doing in this proof of concept is they're actually creating a shared object, a piece of code over here. And of course it's in C, so they've got a constructor coming in where you know it's running before the main, the, the startup in this case, they're changing the user ID to, uh, to uh, zero, they're changing the group ID to zero, they're changing the directory all the way to root, which is that slash. And then of course they're running all of the stuff and this is what's gonna happen. They're gonna open a shell in this situation. But again, you can't just you know set your IDs to uh, zero. You can't just set your ID to root. You have to go through a different step and this is where they're gonna build an environment that's gonna trick it. So now these next four lines are pretty important. What's basically happening over here is line one, we're making directories, two directories, woot slash Etsy and libnss, which is where we're gonna be storing these malcrafted files. So the next is where we're echoing a password into a new file we make called woot etsy nsswitch.conf. Now remember a normal nsswitch.conf will ask you to query things like your file systems, but here the attacker is making the system query woot 1337. So now when sudo runs with those, you know, root privileges as it's given, it will load up woot 1337, the shared object in that lib nns folder uh, from my understanding. And this is where, again, the real sauce starts to happen. So what'll happen is the system's real group will be copied into the ch root, as the third line shows. Um, and then the last is, of course, the compilation of the C code that was written above in that Woot 1337 shared object. So now when you go underneath it, where it's echoing Woot, right, that sudo dash capital R Woot Woot, what that'll effectively do is it will, you know, uh, get sudo to ch root into the woot directory, and then the next woot in this situation should basically just be the command. And again, what's happening is once you're inside, sudo runs in this controlled ch rooted environment, that ns switch conf posts to the attacker code, you know, in that password query that it's providing. And of course the malicious shared object is then loaded. And of course the exploit runs, you're set as user root and a shell is spawned. And now I get to show this running in a provided uh, Docker container that these researchers have given. Now to show you how this works in action, they provided a Docker container, which is basically just like a uh, standard Ubuntu installation alongside the affected versions of the pseudo program, right? So again, the only thing in here is that ch woot sh file, that script. So if we just uh, run this, ladies and gentlemen, what you have to look for is the word pwn, right? So we're currently in the user. Now, if we hit enter, whoo, all of a sudden, we're now in that root directory, ladies and gentlemen. We have now gotten those super duper elevated privileges. So if I exit, you can see that all I can see is all this stuff right here. Now, if I go back into the root directory, what you can do over here is you can in fact nuke your entire system. Now, what can you do as a super user? Well, you could run really dangerous commands, ladies and gentlemen. Now that you have access to the whole file system, you could theoretically go out of your way and run a command known as a sudo rm rf slash no preserve root. Slap that enter. Oh, oh, wait, did we nuke it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Again, I don't think I entered this entirely right right over here, but again, just to give you a visual understanding, if you ran this command underneath most modern Linux distributions, uh, you can basically nuke your entire installation. You can just delete everything, okay? You know, much like the old days of deleting System32, which isn't super duper possible these days, just because Microsoft has a lot more permissions in place to prevent people from doing something so fucking utterly stupid, uh, Linux is just like, hey buddy, it's okay if you want to get rid of everything, you can. Now, the reason why I showed you this command is it should it should present you the uh, the understanding visually that giving any program access like this to your computer, well, they can just do about anything. If they can delete your whole goddamn file system, who knows what else they can do? And really, that's why you have to be careful anytime you super user or like sudo or run something as an administrator. When you give something really privileged access to your system, you're basically letting it have unfettered access to your files and God knows what else. Now again, this was a pretty serious, serious, serious exploit that apparently existed in Linux for over 10 years. And the reason why I'm showing it to you is because A, Thankfully, it's been dealt with. There's been a lot of patches that have come out. Chances are, if you're on Linux, whatever distribution out there, you've probably received a amazing pseudo patch. And you probably don't have to worry about this. But if you're somebody that's administering systems, and if you're somebody that is not actively updating your stuff, then you probably should understand that this is a pretty common vector of attack. That pseudo program, just pseudo in general, has always been a very popular form to attack. You know, for over a decade at this point, well over a decade. Now, before any of you guys go in the audience, but Muda, what about those Mac guys? Are they unsafe? They also have stuff like sudo and chroot. And while you're right, that does exist underneath Macs, the reality is the big key contention here was NS switch. And uh, since that doesn't exist underneath Linux, at least in a similar capacity, and because underneath, Ma or sorry, that doesn't exist under Mac, and also underneath Mac, there's things like system integrity protection. So generally speaking, unless you really unsecured your Mac, which is not a real use case, these exploits wouldn't really be attacking a Mac user, right? Again, you really have to go out of your way to make shit really unsafe on your MacBook product. B b otherwise, you'll, you'll pretty much be fine, okay? For the most part, right? Again, totally different circumstances, different security parameters there. This is very much a Linux thing. And there's been many other ways that sudo has been attacked. But this is one of those ways where I think just demonstrating how easy it, it was to go from a account that had no privileges all of a sudden to an account that had every single privilege in the book can be very dangerous. And again, if you don't update your shit, if you don't keep things, you know, always on the up and up, then uh, chances are you're always opening up a backdoor some other way for people to get... If somebody got access to your computer and let's say it wasn't encrypted, they just were able to log into a local account, well, they can escalate themselves even higher and do whatever they wanted. If you ran even just a program that was able to leverage this exploit locally and it gained access to super privileged parts of your system, they can start to do whatever they want from it. They can run other pieces of program. They can open up network. They can, they can do whatever it is that you can conceive with this level of access. So yeah, if you want to be safe, just update your system. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully you saw some cool stuff today. Hopefully you had a laugh. Uh, hopefully you learn interesting ways to nuke your system uh, if, if you ever felt like it. But ladies and gentlemen, I found this to be particularly entertaining to me. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.